Welcome back, Naomi and Matt Bennett joining us again. Well, Naomi, when you look at basis, I mean, soybean basis definitely telling a different story than corn basis. Really, what's at play? Yeah, what we're seeing is um, basis widen out in some parts of the country that you wouldn't expect it to. In some other places, it's staying firm. So the market is trying to suggest in some capacity, you know, where there's demand, there's going to be the strong demand, and that's likely going to continue all the way to harvest. And then those other places, the market is really saying, whoa, let's kind of slow down a little bit. I think we're going to see those indicators show up on the next USDA report as they tweak various types of the demand equation um, going forward. So as producers, what you want to be mindful of, keep track of the basis. Is it widening out? Is it narrowing? The market in your local place is trying to tell you what you should be doing with any grain you have on hand and even potentially with what you should be doing with forward contracting. Yeah, Matt, when you look at these basis levels across the country, what is it telling you? The interesting thing when it comes to basis is that over the last couple of weeks, you know, we've kind of before this week, we've leaked off on prices, uh, both corn and beans. It's no secret that uh, we were struggling to find any buyers in here. And so, you know, the bean basis was widening out at the same time that the board was going down. It's a horrible sign, especially this time of year, because a lot of times whenever you see the board heading lower, uh, you know, some of these folks have to go out there and source these beans. They've got to bid up to get them. And quite frankly, they weren't doing so. And so I think there's a couple of different things going on. First of all, there's not a whole lot of beans available. You know, and then second of all, I think some of these crushers look out towards margins once new crop beans are about to arrive and they see really good margins. And it's kind of similar to a year ago where some of these soybean crushers, I, I think, are kind of backing away from the table, at least for the time being, not really wanting to chase things around too much. But the simple fact of the matter, when you looked at August beans this last week, uh, there's no doubt that some of these folks are going out there and trying to secure some supplies as August is getting ready to go into delivery. So it's been a pretty interesting dynamic that we've seen unfold. But by all means, basis has certainly uh, told a lot of the tale. And unfortunately, we lost enough in basis that this huge rally uh, for cash beans actually didn't mean quite as much as what uh, producers would have liked to have seen it. Right. Now, I mean, before we move over to cattle, when you look at the futures price action that we've seen, you know, we, we've talked a lot about how the funds really were exiting. And that's why we saw that massive drop and they were kind of sitting on the side, sidelines. So did they get back in or are they still on the sidelines? Well, for the most part, they've been maybe buyers of just a little bit on this recent rally, but not the large scale buying that we had seen previously, nor are they selling things off. So they're kind of just sitting and waiting and watching. They don't have a reason to fully sell off and go short into the marketplace, but at the same time, they are concerned and they're watching outside market news, outside market influences, keeping an eye on crude oil prices. And I think they also keep an eye on seasonals as well. They might be waiting for more signs of a harvest low before they come back in, but I can tell you they're not coming in and buying in mass. And that is going to also be a reason that grain prices might stay on the defensive for the short term. Uh, we are seeing open interest actually declining. And so with the recent rally is maybe more of a weaker rally when open interest is declining. So I'm, again, still a little bit more cautious and we want to keep an eye on the funds. It'll be interesting to see the official numbers released Friday afternoon. Matt, when you look at the cattle side, we just had our Farm Journal report show you how devastating the drought has been for, for cotton but it's also been for cattle. We've seen the lines at the livestock auctions. You know, some of these these folks, they're forced to sell their cattle right now. Do, do we have an accurate picture? Do we know how much contraction is taking place right now with the U.S. cattle herd? Well, the unfortunate reality is that uh, where, the, where we have a lot of cattle in this country, uh, that's where the drought is the worst. So you get into the Western Corn Belt, uh, you know, you get into the uh, Nebraska, Kansas, down into the Panhandle of Texas, obviously, in the West of Texas. And there's no doubt there's a ton of cattle in that part of the world. Uh, and so your pasture is drying up because obviously you're not able to catch the rainfall you'd like to see. A lot of those folks are trying to figure out a way to get rid of cattle just simply because they can't feed them. And so uh, whenever you have a lot of folks in one part of the world trying to get rid of cattle, unfortunately, the price is going to be a fantastic price and so you know we've heard of a lot of producers actually in my part of the world trying to find cattle uh, to bring to areas where we've actually had a fair amount of rainfall so it's very worrisome it's it's a tough road to hoe but i do think once you get past some of this uh, whenever you get out into the winter time frame i think cattle numbers suggest to me that you could see some excitement here. I understand the unwillingness to maybe step forward and buy feeders on a week whenever corn prices are up 50 cents. I totally understand that. But at the same time, I think whenever you work on past this, 
Naomi's right and uh, I mean my inclination is right and we're going to back off on these prices at some point because we're going to raise good enough crops I think that this feeder market will probably get stronger once again I think fat cattle this next winter could be a quite interesting dynamic all right Matt and Naomi thank you so much for joining us this weekend we appreciate it let's take a quick break and then we'll have much more right here on U.S. Farm Report <music> 